Calculus BC, Lesson 1.1, Lines. As you may guess, lines is a pretty basic concept. Uh, so this will go very quickly. That's why videos have a <laughs> rewind and pause buttons. Calculus is a different type of math. Uh, most algebra classes, things are exact, even with inequalities. They start at 1 and change less than that, or things like that. Calculus deals with constantly changing things. Um, the derivative is a change with respect to something. Uh, the integral is the opposite of that, although we'll get to that. So one of the things they work with is what's called um, increments or deltas, I'll generally call them. So a delta x and a, a delta y. Um, this looks just like the slope of a line in that we do uh, slope, actually I'll bring it down here, slope is a y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is just the change in y over the change in x. Very soon in calculus, we'll write this as d for delta y over dx. And we'll write it lots of different ways, things like that, but soon enough. Um, so, again, this is like a month and a half of Algebra 2 in 20 seconds or less. Um, point slope form, which I used to write it differently in our text, which I want to stay consistent with. It's the slope times x minus x1 uh, plus y1. I typically wrote y minus y1. I like to keep it, so I'm doing it that way. And I probably will write it that way and then flip it over at the last second. Uh, slope intercept, which is the first thing most people's brains jump to, is y equals mx plus b. So just be aware. You have to change back and forth between these. And the general linear equation, just for the fun of it, because you just don't have enough to remember, is ax plus by equals c. a and b uh, don't both equal 0. At least one of them is non-zero. Uh, do we always call it the general linear equation? Um, I believe I've seen it called standard form. And who cares? Just be aware. It's not that big a deal. So find the slope of the line that runs through the points. Write the equation line in all three forms. So let's do a delta y first. And as long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go 1 minus negative 2, 3. If you want to go with y1 and y2 and then write them out, great. Whatever you want to do. Delta x four minus three. So your slope is three over one, three. Your point slope, and again I'm gonna write it my way, I'm gonna use this one. Is y minus negative 2 equals 3 times x minus 3. And again, I'm going to write it the way they want it to finish up. Slope intercept form. We take that and run with it. y equals 3x minus 9 plus 2. y equals 3x minus 7. And it's nice to be able to check our work. We can throw 4, 1 in to see if it works. 3 times 4 doesn't work. Looks like I made a mistake. Hmm. I'm going to go 3x plus 2, 3x minus 9, minus 7. Mistake there somewhere. Might have done the slope wrong. Let's check that. 1 minus negative 2. Change in y, 4 minus 3, 1. Slope looks good. y plus 2. There it is. It's supposed to be minus 2 right there. So, like I said, good time to check. 
Uh, so that would be minus 11. 3 times 4 is 12. Checks. Well, good thing I made that mistake on purpose. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. And then general form. Pardon me. What do we call it? I don't even know. General linear equation. Yeah, whatever. Um, we like to keep the x positive if possible. It is not essential. 3x minus y equals 11. You can throw a point in there if you want to check it. Looks like I did it right this time. So as I said, flying along here, pause and rewrite if you need to, go from there. What about parallel and perpendicular lines? Parallel, same slope. Perpendicular, opposite reciprocal slope. So, find an equation for a line through the point, negative 1, 2, parallel and perpendicular to the line. So, parallel first. M still equals 3. Y minus 2 equals 3 times X plus 1. Y equals 3 times X plus 1 plus 2. And perpendicular, m equals negative one third. Y minus two equals negative one third. X plus one. Y equals negative one third. X plus one plus two. See a lot of people uh, instincts to turn that into slope intercept. As it says slope intercept, leave it. It's a lot easier to write things in point slope. A uh, little bit of graphical stuff. Get used to graphing everything. I'm doing what I call a quick and dirty graph. I'm not labeling it, not labeling the axes. Actually, I don't need to dot this. So this is x equals 3. While I said it's very quick, I am a big fan of labeling the heck out of everything. And I think I said 3. I meant negative 3, which it is. And goes to the point negative 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what line is perpendicular and goes through there? Once again, big fan of labeling things. Negative 3, comma, 4. That would make this horizontal, y equals 4. A lot of people don't need a graph. Great, wonderful. Strongly recommend it. How would we find the equation line given the data below? And what's that f of x thing? f of x, same as putting a y there. But it's a very powerful little thing. Seems like nothing to a lot of math students. They just get confused by it. It means it's a function. f is a function of x. Now, that's a big deal. Very big deal. More on that in your near future. So how do we find the equation of a line? Well, let's find the slope. Um, I feel like going uh, 14 thirds minus negative 4 thirds over negative 1 minus 1. Uh, 18 thirds over negative 2 is negative 3. Cool. Um, how do we find the equation of a line? So now we can just use any point you want. I'll use this one. Uh, f of x minus 14 thirds equals negative 3 x plus 1 f of x equals negative 3 x plus 1 plus 14 thirds. You could keep going on that if you wanted and make it into slope intercept, but it doesn't matter. If you left that as a y, I probably wouldn't care, but the AP exam might. And as low key as I am as a teacher, this is something you're going to want to start watching out for is the, the details. I really make sure. So. Let's do uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. Um, 
I do know that 212 degrees Fahrenheit is equivalent to uh, 100 degrees Celsius. I'm putting myself on the spot here because I don't actually know this stuff that well. 32 degrees Fahrenheit is 0 degrees Celsius. So let's go with uh, Fahrenheit based on Celsius, or Celsius based on Fahrenheit. Let's do Celsius equals something along those lines. Uh, so let's write points. Seems to always be a good idea. Uh, according to this, the Fahrenheit's the x value. So 1, 2, 1, 2, comma, 100, and 32, comma, 0. What the heck? Um, slope, 1, 100 over 212 minus 32. 100 over, keeping a calculator handy, I can do it in my head, I just don't trust my head. One eighty and math fracking that on the calculator gets me to five ninths. Um so Celsius equals five ninths Fahrenheit. Excuse me. Change color here and see what I'm doing. Uh Celsius minus zero using that point, equals 5 ninths Fahrenheit minus 32. Keep going. Just because this is what I wanted it to look like. And I've decided to go with a uh, fraction. Celsius equals, pardon me, a decimal, 5 minus F uh, plus 17.8. So I'm just screwing around. Let's see if I did it right. 5 divided by 9 times 32 plus 17.8 gets me 36. Looks like I screwed something up. Well, first off, it's a minus turkey. Good. So then it works nicely. If I have 32 Fahrenheit, I get 0 Celsius. Let's try the other one. I put in 212 times 5 divided by 9. I'm doing this on a calculator off to the side. Minus 17.8 gives me 100. So that works. Notice now I've made two mistakes today. Not on purpose. Uh, caught by checking. So that's something you might want to make a habit of doing. So how do you model a whole set of data? By hand, we just showed you. Grab a couple points and go. You'd have to scatter plot it first to see what the best points are. Um, for a whole thing, we need a calculator. This is actually fairly tricky. So hopefully you've seen it somewhere before. But if not, I'm going to do it right now. So here's our calculator. Stat. Enter. And let's go with, um, let's call 1980 0. 5, 10. Uh, we don't have to do this, but it's actually a little bit better way to do it. Um, so we did 5, 10, 15, 23, 24, 25, 23, 24, 25. Assuming I did this right. Yep. And then 44, 54. Looks good. Quit out of that stat. And uh, this unit is called line, so we're going to try and put a uh, linear regression through it. And you can do either one of these. I'm going to do number four. Number eight would also work. It's just written differently. 
And it gives us this stuff saying uh, list one, list two. And I say, yeah, that's what I want to use. And then it's got other nonsense, which I don't need. And I say, yeah, calculate it. So we get A equals 79.957. And B equals 44.66. And yeah, we'll go with 44.66 plus 44.66. And that slope was 79.957. There it is. Good. That is a linear model. Now we could also use this to do some work, but in this case we're not going to. If we said what's the population today, well we would just say y equals, and I lied, I guess I will tell you, do some work times, um, that's 25, this is the year 35. Plus 44, We should have a population in this year of about 7.26 billion, which is actually pretty close to uh, to what it is. So a little surprising that the world population is linear. It's actually not, but over a short term it can be viewed that way. Um, but anyway, some interesting math. You've got a lot to do. Write this in while I'm here. Good luck.